I'm Ryan Purdy. I'm Conan Escajeda. And I'm Jesse Pierce. So uh, this summer we worked in community horticulture, so that's actually like going around with people and teaching them about the plants and the vegetation around the community. Um, we worked with Dr. Catherine Fino, who's the plant and soil science um, specialist in the state of Louisiana. And um, the main three things we did over the summer was develop a nature camp for children from ages five to 10. We uh, assisted Dr. Catherine in her research for uh, different vegetation trials. And we also got to shadow with different professionals uh, of the state of Louisiana. Um, so beginning, we started with a Louisiana teacher tour. Um, it taught us about the different careers we can um, get from forest and horticulture. Um, and what I really took from this was how to develop the, the children's activities from the nature camp. Because that was one of my, um, well, all parts. So that's what I really grasped. And um, the, I'm, not, I'm from Chicago, so I don't really know a lot about the land down here. But um, I learned that Louisiana is one of the top in the country for <coughs> Um, here's a picture. We're at a family farm. Um, this is their winery, and they're um, famous. They've been on a couple of shows from around like Duck Dynasty and Travel Channel. And um, yeah. and this is uh, the group of us. These are all teachers, and we're the only students, so it's kind of fun <laughs> learning about teachers and their lives. So like I said, one of our um, objectives was to develop a nature camp. So it was at Burden Gardens. Um, it was one week long. It started uh, June 25th to 29th, and it was uh, 8 to 12. And uh, we designed this ourselves. Well, we adapted it for a couple of books, but we uh, wrote down lesson plans and developed it. And, um, each day had like a different activity. So like the first day was like, uh, orientation in nature. The second day was like the Arbor Day. It was very cool, you know, designing this. You know, I learned that a lot of kids uh, nowadays don't even get to interact with nature, even from being down south. I know as a kid in Chicago in the city, I've never been outside, so <laughs> and, uh, he taught me how to fish because I almost hit him in the eye. Like, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was fun. So we're really going to harp on this uh, nature camp that we put together just because it was kind of our bread and butter for the whole summer, a solid month and a half of just planning and, and buying stuff for this nature camp. We went up to that teacher tour to talk to elementary school teachers and middle school teachers about how the kids will react to certain situations and you know maybe get ideas from them for the nature camp itself. Um, what I got out of this internship was, I, you know, I got it in the first three weeks when we were at that teacher tour, uh, which was just getting to know people in the uh, forestry industry and uh, you know, maybe someone who would hire me one day in a potential career. Uh, but the day one of the nature camp was our orientation to nature. And what that basically was, was showing kids that though nature might be fun and exciting, there's also a certain level of danger to it and a certain level of care that they have to take when they're out in nature. You know, whether it's uh, sunscreen, putting on sunscreen or uh, hydrating every day. But also, we had a snake specialist come out and teach them about different types of snakes, which ones are poisonous and which ones aren't poisonous. And uh, we also gave them a poison ivy demonstration because uh, a couple kids did walk walk away with poison ivy. So <laughs> next, um, here's a couple pictures. Uh, every day it started with a hayride on a tractor. Uh, you see us with the kids on the back of that, and then um, right here, kids are holding the snakes that the uh, snake Russell, who's the snake specialist, came out and showed them. Next. You actually can't see too well in this picture, but some of these kids were carrying these disposable cameras. These disposable cameras were given to them on the first day, and they were allowed to take pictures themselves with these cameras and get the film developed. However, a lot of kids did not understand the idea. Right. That <laughs> picture, you, I can't see this picture right now? What do you, what do you mean, I can't see it right now? I have yeah, a lot of kids, you know, 
pulled out their iPhones and stuff, and you know, right. which are, you know, I, I obviously didn't have one of those when I was their age, but uh, it just shows you know the progression of technology in the last 15 years. And another thing to note about this nature camp was that one of the main things, as Roddy said, a lot of kids aren't exposed to certain things that we presented them with. So the snake demonstration, for example, a lot of these children were very, very fearful of this snake. I had one. <laughs> I, had, I didn't tell you. I had one child sit there and sob her eyes out just because we brought out a snake. She was so scared that she was going to get basically killed by a snake. I had to reassure her, no, this isn't. He, he's showing you a non-venomous snake. It's okay, but it's okay to be scared. And the fact is, you faced your fear. And you're learning, and it's awesome. And so we sat us, we sat to the side, and we waited for everybody to finish up. But really, these kids, little kids, and older kids too, but especially the little ones, getting exposed to all this really makes a difference in their life. Uh, day two was our Arbor Day. Uh, we had the arborists over at the Burden Gardens. They went ahead and took little kids up into the trees, about 40 feet in the air, just to kind of show them that there's more jobs out there than just doctors and lawyers, there's also arborists um, and other agriculture related uh, careers. Uh, we also did like a, a leaf stamping kind of activity, which is where they went ahead, went out in nature, took leaves, painted them, and then put on t-shirts, which they could wear for the rest of the week. And uh, the other activity that we did that day was, we, uh, I'm sure all of you all know about it, but it's like the tree rings. It's, you know, you could determine the age of a tree and what that tree's been through in its life cycle um, just by looking at the rings in that in that little piece of wood. Um, here's a couple pictures. Unlike Jesse's little girls, my little girls, they were they were fearless. They went right up into trees. They were touching snakes. They were they were just you know real cool little girls to work with. And right here we have a Glenn, the uh, head arborist over at Burden. Go ahead and uh, he's pulling a kid up a tree, and the kid thinks he's climbing it, but you know. Actually, the picture of the kids in the trees were actually my kids. So those are the little five-year-olds. <laughs> uh, day three was our fish and water day. That was that was a pretty cool day. We had Brian LeBlanc. He's uh, one of the doctor or professors over here at LSU. He came out and uh, they dissected a fish and showed him like the fish eye and uh, dissected the brain of the fish, which is pretty cool. Uh, he also gave a trophic level presentation to him, showing um, showing him the different levels of uh, I guess organisms in like Louisiana freshwater environments. But uh, a lot of the little kids kind of went ahead and told Dr. LeBlanc, like, hey, the shark's not the biggest thing in the ocean, it's uh, Shamu. <laughs> so they kind of had to school him a little bit there, too. Um, the highlight of that day for them, I think, was definitely the fishing. I think that was a highlight of your day as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah a couple of the kids, they, well, we went ahead and made bamboo poles, you know, just cane poles. And uh, a few of the kids actually did catch fish, to my surprise. Uh, <laughs> And at the very end of that day, we gave them a thousand water balloons. So if you want to see a hundred dollars in water balloons go out in about five minutes, <laughs> hand it to forty little kids. Another thing about the fish dissection was that um, fish scales actually have rings very similarly to the way that trees have rings. So they were able to learn that they can age a fish approximately based on the number of rings seen. So we had a little microscope that they were able to look through it while we were doing the dissection and basically just taking stuff from previous days and applying it further to the next day. Yeah, here we have a couple of our kids. This guy actually has my fishing rod and he's out there. He didn't catch anything though. This little dude, he was just he was one of the youngest guys in the group and uh, he was just having a blast the whole the whole week, I think. So this that is being held in front of him is actually a snake skin that I found in the water. And then we were just talking about snakes the other day, so I found the snake skin and I showed it to all the kids, and he was very happy to see it, so he was smiling. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, had, we had three kids catch fish, and they were all my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, right here. <laughs> hey, there's three of us, so. <laughs> this um, little boy's named Landry, and he's holding one of the poles I constructed, so we went out to Burden and chopped down bamboo into what, like, about four foot length. Four foot, and um, then we drilled holes, and then um, it really wasn't, it was pretty simple like to do. And um, I never been outside, so it was pretty, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much learned as much as we could. Yeah, it was really simple. And it taught us about budgeting, because that was one of the competition skills. 
I'm still here. All right. Okay, so the d fourth day was bird day. So we were talking about birds, but we were also zip lining. So we told the kids, it's like as if you're flying. Put your arms out like you're flapping your arms like you're a bird. But in addition to the zip lining, which a lot of kids were very, very excited to do because, I mean, hey, zip lining's fun. Uh, we built and painted these bird houses. They were uh, designed to be able to fit the eastern bluebirds. So we ta ta taught them about um, the impact of a bunch of different environmental factors leading to the endangerment of the um, ivory-billed woodpecker, which has led to less cavities being made in forests, which led to less cavities being made for birds to house them. So we make birdhouses so they can live. So really what the problem with the birdhouses was, we got planks from the store, we cut them, we drilled holes in them. And this took like three days in a very hot woodshed. It was very, very, <laughs> very intense. And it involved a lot of teamwork, a lot of talking about how are we gonna do this, a lot of trial and error. And ultimately what we decided on was setting it up so we, we pre-drilled all the holes, we put the screws in the birdhouses, and then we unscrewed it. And then we gave them some little cute sc screwdrivers and let them screw it in. Some of the kids didn't really understand even though we had it labeled. My little girls were engineers, though. Yeah, those, those girls. Right. My kids, the ones that didn't even know how to read, uh, no, they had no idea what they were doing. Mine but tried their best. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I meant. Well, and then in addition to that, we had snacks every single day because if we are out there running around, kids are going to get hungry. Somebody's going to be complaining. So for the snack, we, we had to make their own trail mix, which was bird feed. And additionally, there was a side activity, and it was a nest building relay race, which was basically just like you ran up, picked some twigs with your two fingers like you were doing it with beak, and then you ran back. And then the next person did the same thing. <laughs> and then you had to build the nest with your fingers. So these are just <laughs> kids zip lining, And you can see like just the personalities that come with a bunch of kids. The kid, all the way over there, Clark. Yeah, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> that was my kid. That was, well, your kid drove everybody nuts. He was, a, he was a good kid, though. But really what it was was not only did we get to interact with these kids and learn about them, but I learned so much from these kids, too. It was such a great, great thing for all of us. And then Amari took this picture of us. Um, this little girl, Natasha, she totally knew what she was doing, but we it just looked good in the photo. We, yeah. we helped her out. She was one of the smart girls. And then also over here, you can see the bird building relay race. I mean, bird nest building relay race. So for the final day, we had a nature competition. So up until this point, we had um, basically the same set of, you know, groups. So I had my kids, he had his kids, he had his kids. And then we also had a student worker, Kaylee, who had her own set of kids. However, for the last day, we mixed up all the kids and had the youngest kids be the team leaders and pick out who they wanted to be on their team. And we had a competition to see who was the best. <laughs> so <laughs> some of the things that we did involved a scavenger hunt throughout this tree trail on the ground of Bergens, which is called the Learning Tree Trail. So. Some of the examples of things that we had them look for was something sticky. Some, somebody gave me a stick and said, this is sticky. And I was like, well, I guess. <laughs> we had a hidden item, which was just one of the bamboo poles. It was pretty hard for some of them to find, even though there wasn't any bamboo. And I was like, OK. We had a pollination relay race, which was basically just uh, we had two goals, and then they ran to the goals and picked up these little yellow puff balls, like as if they were pollen grains. And then they came back home to their hive. Go, run and go, run and go. And we had a mealworm eating trial, which was basically, we, um, Dr. Fano over there went to the um, insectarium in New Orleans and picked up some mealworms. It was um, barbecue flavored and cheddar flavored. <laughs> so. For every one that one of the kids ate, they, I mean, actually, for every child that ate a mealworm, they got a point for their team. 
one of my kids insisted on eating basically an entire box, and I was like, dude, you're not getting any bonus points. And he's like, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> they were not good. <laughs> and for the final thing we had that day, we had a water soaking competition because at this point it was really hot and all the kids just really wanted to, you know, get drenched. So we had these buckets and we had these water bottles throughout the week that they were able to use to fill up with water. And they filled up the buckets and then we went out all the way to the side of the pavilion that we had been set up at for the whole week and there were some sprinklers. And the whole idea was get your camp counselor soaked to the toe. And whoever's the most soaked wins. And the nastier little kids would go ahead and fill it up with ice water. Right. I was very cold. <laughs> Some of the kids were filling it up with muddy water and throwing it on. So I was like, dude, come on now. <laughs> so at the beginning of the week, we asked the kids, would you rather play inside or outside? And you can see in the first picture, most of them wanted to play. Um, but then, if you, <laughs> if you look at the second picture, there were only two kids that said inside, and one kid was on the fence. <laughs> was on the fence. <laughs> Clark. It was Clark. 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 But really, it goes to show just how much of an impact we made on some of these kids. Like, oh, this is actually fun, and I don't have to be on my iPad every two seconds of my life. And this little picture right here is just us with all the kids. And you can just see some of them leaning down, just those personalities again. So in addition to all of this stuff leading up to the actual summer camp, afterwards we still had a lot of time left of the internship. So Dr. Fontenot here decided to give us the chance to do a bunch of different things, such as shadow a 4-H agent and shadow a county agent. We assisted her in her vegetable trial plots, and we also helped her construct other plots for further um, data collection. And as Ronnie stated, we had done that. Uh, we also got to do stuff like operate heavy machinery, such as driving some tractors around. <laughs> got some tractor driving lessons. And agricultural tools, as well as like other tools, like we were doing the wood making stuff. We helped assist in the upkeep in the ground of the grounds of the bird and botanic gardens. Basically, we did a lot of weed pulling. One we helped, res we actually, we helped in the restoration of a trail there but it's not done yet. We helped build some of the signs and we helped spread some gravel. So there's gonna be a new trail soon. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, we toured some botanic gardens and some research stations. Over here, we went to Longview in um, New Orleans and this is in their children's garden. We went there to gather some inspiration for a um, idea that we were gonna implement into the Burden's children's garden, but it was ultimately, ultimately scrapped just because of Lack of time. Uh, lack of time and also logistics. It just really wasn't going to work out. And then um, this other picture was whenever we went to the Hammond Research Station. Whenever Dr. Kiki Fondo over here had to give a talk, she just tagged us along. This is us in the tomato field. Um, we were picking some tomatoes for Dr. Kiki uh, because she was doing a... Um, she was doing several different trials on a bunch of different varieties of tomatoes, trying to see which ones grew the best and were resistant to disease while also maintaining a good taste. We ultimately had to destroy this entire field. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anybody got some questions? <laughs> huh? Any questions? All right. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.